you might have noticed like 14 or something new videos on my channel in the span of a few hours well don't worry uh, that is not the style I'm gonna be making my videos on from now on no those are just re-uploads from my old second channel called HK on the way all the way rather which is now deleted so I decided to transfer all the videos to my main channel so they still exist because at least most of them are pretty useful. Uh, I was considering deleting some of them though, but I would imagine it would be more bad than good. So I'm gonna be making videos just like I have in the previous couple of months on this channel, so nothing changes on that. However, there is a big change, maybe not in the channel, but in me. I am now a trans woman and I use she her pronouns but I'm not only making the video for that actually there's another discovery that I had recently my dear friend anonymous 1184 who is uh, 839 years old recently wrote this code so first of all let's look at how maps usually operate and create a mappy object. So the way you specify keys and values is just one after another. So maybe the key is going to be called, sure, first key and the value is, well, first value. And then when you want to add another key pair, key value pair, you do like second key which is the name of the key, and then second value, which is, well, the name of the value, and that's how you use it. But I've heard a couple of people, I guess, complain that maps don't have special syntax like objects do, for example. So in an object, this would be first, uh, first key, then a colon, and then also first value as a string because it is a string and then second key uh, which is second value as well so you don't have to put it in quotes and you also have a colon instead of a comma to essentially bind the key to the value while in a map that's not really obvious if you put it this way you have to always keep track which one is the key and which one is the value. You don't really have to do that in an object, which is, I think, why people enjoy it so much. So, uh, there is actually a way to have both. Using this code, which, once again, Anonymous1184 wrote, I didn't do it I just thought it was a really cool idea using that you can also have your old maps and nothing really changes where you specify keys and values with quotes but you can also uh, use object syntax for creating maps so first key once again is first value and Mappy, in this case, will not be an object, it will be a map. So everything as you expect is just that now uh, you can use object syntax to initialize it. Now to be fair, there were speed comparisons by Anonymous once again. So a normal map, if you don't modify it like this, is obviously the fastest, but the difference between them is so small that if you can find a place where that matters, I think you shouldn't be using HK. And many of the um, like big knowers of HK would probably agree with me on that. So if you enjoy using object syntax a lot and want to use it in maps as well, I think it's just a good idea to add this code somewhere. Now keep in mind that this code has to be before the first time you try to use object syntax on a map. 
So if you put it here, it won't work. It has to be after. So that's why I have uh, a folder in my libraries, lib-v2, which has a bunch of extensions. So I have a file which extends the map. Here I have safe set and safe set map. I think I have a video on that. I'm not sure why I paused because I don't even remember the name of the video or a link to it, but essentially safe set and safe set map throw an error if you have duplicate keys and reverse, which does what you expect. So I'm going to be adding this code to lib-v2 extensions map.hk. And as always, I leave a link to my GitHub profile in the description. But this looks like absolute magic when you first look at it, especially if you don't know the more specific v2 shenanigans that you didn't have in v1. Like, you couldn't extend behavior of classes in v1, I'm pretty sure. Or at least it wouldn't be nearly as easy. However, I know, I understand it doesn't look easy. However, it's like it's actual code. It's not pure magic. Well, first of all, before I explain that code, let's check that this actually works. So let's infos mappy first uh, key. So if this was an object, what we would do is use this. So let's try that out. And we get an error because once again, mappy as is a map not an object so it still uses this syntax and here we go we got first value and if you don't know about infos oh poof, that's not it info uh is just my class to display information here and I also have a video on that so let's actually get to the code um okay so what does this line do to make this thing happen, we need to implement a new method into the constructor, meaning we want to redefine what happens if you, um, no, not here. Uh, we redefine what happens when you map brackets, when you're in the brackets of a class and map is a class, you're currently in the constructor. It's like calling a function, but it creates an instance of that class. So in this case, it would be mappy. So we are in the con constructor and we want to redefine how it works. But we also want to keep the old behavior as well. We want to be able to use strings and so on, like the usual syntax, just replacing the old behavior with the new one would break a lot of libraries and probably your own code as well. So we want to keep the old method as well. So this line does that. The variable that we end up getting is a function object of the old constructor of the map. So map prototype. This is the place where that constructor method actually lies. It doesn't lie on the map itself, it is on the map prototype, because it's not static. I can understand that concepts like these are a bit confusing, if you haven't <laughs> scratched your head enough against these honestly not obvious concepts, but I will be explaining them, because Misha on the Autohotkey Discord recently, well, not recently at this point, made a really good infographic on all these things, basically inheritance in AHK, and I will be explaining that to you in the future. So get own prop description. Essentially, we get something which is an object of the constructor and get the call property. So we get the property of underscore underscore new, which is the constructor, and get the call property of that. Essentially, what happens when we call it? And well, it returns the function object. Great, we got that. Why do we have that? To implement it back. So basically, 
now we have this function. Here it is. So we pass this um, and params. What is params? Well, it's a way to specify as many parameters as you want. So that's usually the case in the map. When you specify something like, once again, first key, first, uh, first value, you can go on semi-infinitely. And params is actually what causes that to be able to happen. Yeah. So we also implement a way to pass as many things as we want. Why? Because if we pass an object, that is only a single parameter. But if we use the default way to define a map, then it's as many parameters as possible. However, if you just specify a single string, it wouldn't work anyway. Meaning, if we only get one thing, which in this case is the object, that means we should use the new way to construct a map, which is exactly what this if statement does. If the length of params is one, what does that mean? Params is actually an array in disguise. So if the array of params is only one, meaning it only has this object, then, all right, is it an object? Well, which is what we are searching for in this case. Um, yeah, so if it's the only parameter that we pass and it is an object, then great, we do this code. But if it isn't, we just do the map like we usually do. So no changes here. Okay. So for key value in params one own props, whoa, 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 that's a lot. Key value is, in this case, key and then value. Okay, so for every key and value in the object, we do what? Oh, and by the way, in the object. So we understood that the length of the params array is only one and it is an object, meaning params with the index of one is the object that we need to enum enumerate. Enumerate, yes. And to enumerate an object, we have to use own props because if we don't, it will work. <laughs> Not sure what to tell you here. Um, yeah, you gotta use own props to get an enumerator for the uh, for loop. So we get the key, we get the value, and we specify the value to the key. And great, we end up having our constructed map. And we pass this to specify the map. So since a constructor is also a method, let me actually show you some class which is more like obvious. And that's a bit old state bulb, which I actually made a video on recently. Look at this class. It has a bunch of methods. And the thing is, every single one of them has a hidden parameter called this. Essentially, the context of where this method exists. So when we look at something non-static, technically what's happening here is something like this the this parameter always exists for every method is just hidden because it would be annoying to always have to put that in right python smh my head um yeah so you don't type it in but it's actually there and that is exactly why we need to pass this in this case because when we add our own extensions we actually do have to think about passing this explicitly. And this, in this case, that's a lot of this, is uh, the instance of the map that we're getting. So this instance, and we pass that into the constructor immediately as we create it. 
It's kind of complicated, honestly. <laughs> but not really. Once you deal with this, these things enough, you start understanding them. So continue watching my videos and you will, I'm pretty sure. I have a very high belief in people and their abilities, uh, but I do know that it takes time. So I believe in you. Uh, okay, and that should be it on the code. We have only one line left. So you actually can define properties, meaning also methods and so on, to whatever you want. You can just define a property to an object, but you can define a property to the prototype of the map. The prototype of classes is where all instance methods lie, so where non-static methods lie. If uh, it was static, it would just be this, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so we define the property, which is called new, so the constructor, we redefine the constructor. And when we use the constructor, what function object do we call? As you can see, call here. We call this function object, which automatically gets past this and parens. I think I was able to explain this pretty well. I hope that makes you understand what this code is actually doing. And uh, see it as less magic. Uh, so yeah, you essentially just take that, go to your map extension library and add it. And it should be all good. And now you can actually freely use the object syntax for maps. Now, an interesting thing is that this apparently exists by default in hotkey underscore h, so the multi-threaded version. I know that's definitely exciting, but I personally wouldn't recommend jumping onto it. I've heard that it has some missing features and it's not necessarily as stable. However, if you personally use v2 multi-threaded, please let me know what's the experience, how stable and overall good it is what's the trade-offs you would be given because I've heard some things not necessarily positive but that's one positive that it has this by default meaning when you write an auto hotkey multi-threaded script you can expect other people to have this sort of syntax instead of relying that they copy this code to them or download another one of your libraries and if you've been watching my videos, you know how many dependencies I have because of like, it's so much easier to maintain a project when it's all divided into files. However, there's the annoyance that when you try to share something, it has like a million dependencies. I am sorry. And technically I shouldn't be doing that as a YouTuber, but it's just so good. Maybe that will have the benefit of teaching you to do the same for you, to make your projects easier to maintain. So, if you enjoyed this video, press a like, type some comment, maybe you have a question or a suggestion. Definitely subscribe so you don't miss my content, but most importantly, stay fresh, cheese bags! And I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye!